It was Duke versus UNC once again as Duke Personnel Relations Director Howard Lee and UNC Alumni Review Editor Richard Gadoos met head-on in the Chapel Hill race for mayor. Voting turnout was one of the heaviest in years, partly due to the fact that Lee is black, Gadoos white. However, there was no mention of race in the campaign. Chapel Hill, a liberal university town, voted Lee into office by a solid majority. Gadoos has been mayor pro tem since 1963, while Lee is a newcomer to the game of politics. Both fought hard for victory and established headquarters in Chapel Hill with plenty of support for both candidates. Lee campaigned on a platform calling for public transportation and increased urban renewal, while Gadoos stressed his progressive experience in Chapel Hill government and his qualifications. Duke University Personnel Relations Director Howard Lee became the first Negro mayor of a predominantly white Southern community when he rolled up an easy victory in last Tuesday's mayoral election in Chapel Hill. He defeated incumbent Mayor Roland Gadoos. Nearly 5,000 people voted in this election. It was the heaviest voter turnout in years. The 34-year-old Lee polled over 2,500 votes to less than 2,200 for Gadoos. Lee carried four of the town's six precincts, getting heavy support in the precincts populated by Negroes and university professors. The new mayor listed three priorities for his administration. These are sanitation, housing, and public transportation. Lee also praised his opponent, Gadoos, for conducting an unusually clean campaign. This is Wallace Wade Stadium in Duke University. Out here we have the combined review of the Air Force ROTC units and the Naval ROTC units at Duke University. The only difference between this and other rallies, we expect a disruption by peace demonstrators shortly. This was the first year that these ROTC companies had gone through their review without ceremonial rifles. The reason was the possibility of a confrontation with campus radicals who have demanded the abolition of ROTC at Duke. A large group of moderate students gathered at Wade Stadium to support the ROTC program. The moderates sat quietly while some 100 peace demonstrators marched into the stadium and began chanting anti-war slogans. Fortunately, no confrontation occurred and the ROTC units marched out undaunted. The peace demonstrators had marched from an SLF, Student Liberation Front rally, on the main quad of Duke to Wade Stadium. The rally began with an anti-war skit and the singing of Vietnamese songs. Just prior to the march, graduate student Neil Bushoven explained at length the SLF's plans to campaign for ROTC's abolishment. This is Durham, North Carolina, and this is Duke University, particularly an anti-war rally. Plans are being made right now by the SLF to demonstrate and to march on the review being held in the outdoor stadium. This rally began peacefully with an anti-war skit and the singing of Vietnamese folk songs. The crowd grew to about 600 before SLF leaders decided to march to Wallace Wade Stadium where the Duke ROTC units were holding their annual joint review. The SLF leaders stressed that the march was to be peaceful and nonviolent. Red armband monitors kept the parade of about 400 people orderly as they marched into the lower section of the stadium. The marchers were then pelted by several eggs and tomatoes thrown by a few conservative members of the Duke community. Despite repeated harassment, the anti-war demonstrators did not react and thereby averted a possible violent outbreak. After the ROTC units marched out, the SLF members remained to plan their campaign to force the abolishment of ROTC. They say that you can't get here from here 
but we went anyway. This is the Morrisville polling place in Morrisville, North Carolina, where all 100 voters are expected to turn out by the close of the polls this evening. The election here in Morrisville today was somewhat unusual in that no one filed for any of the four vacant offices, including that of mayor. Local officials believe that this may be the first time in state history that no one has entered the race. However, it doesn't seem to bother the people of Morrisville. I'm talking right now with Mr. E.L. Forbes, register, registrar for the election here in Morrisville. Mr. Forbes, the current mayor, Mr. Johnny Robertson, did not file for this election. I wonder if you could tell me why he decided not to file. Well, he said the had the uh, mayor. He's been mayor for quite a while, and he thinks somebody else should take his place. So he just decided it was just about time for him to quit, and he decided it was his time was up. Is that right? That's right. That is right. Uh, since Mr. Robertson is not running, and nor any of the three members of the board of commissioners, I wonder if you could tell me: Is there much interest in this election? Is voter turnout the same as it always has been here in Morrisville? I th there's quite a bit of interest, and I think we're going to have a good turnout. You are, even though no one is running. Oh, even uh, though no one is running. Okay, and one more question, Mr. Uh, Forbes. Will you elect a mayor this year in Morrisville? We will. We will, indefinitely. That's the word from Morrisville, a mayor coming? Maybe.